All right, folks, this chapter is all about sedimentary rocks. Now, sedimentary rocks uh, are derived from the weathering and erosion of other rocks. What of their rocks? Yes, basically. Uh, igneous rocks, which are, you know, kind of our parent of all rocks. Other sedimentary rocks as well. And then, of course, the ones we have yet to talk about, metamorphic rocks, right? So we can make sediment from any of these types of rocks. Uh, in sedimentary rocks, we have two main groups. The first one is clastic also known as detrital, clastic, or clasts, right, a, a clast of something, or detrital, detritus, right? Uh, and the second one, uh, second group, is chemical sedimentary rocks. And we'll get to both of these in due time, right? But before you make a sedimentary rock, you have to make the sediment. So to make sediment, we have exposed rock that's going to weather uh, or break apart, right? Agents of this weathering include wind, rain, water, ice, gravity, and the such, right? So here's kind of the beginning uh, up at the top here of, of our weathering, a piece of granite that is, is weathering away, and then kind of an end product of weathering here, this nice, tan, beautiful sand dunes and prized primarily of quartz, which is a very stable mineral. So, again, to make sedimentary rocks, we must make sediment, and an important distinction we must make is between weathering and erosion. So weathering is the mechanical and or chemical disintegration or decomposition of material in place, right? So when it breaks down, either physically or chemically, uh, in place that is weathering. So weathering is how we form sediment. Erosion, on the other hand, is when this material that has been weathered, chemically or physically, is then taken and removed or transported by wind, water, glaciers, gravity, yada, yada. This is erosion. So erosion is how sediment is transported. Weathering, the basically rotting of the rock in place. Erosion, the removal of that rock from its original home, uh, bringing it elsewhere. So this is how we transport the sediment. Let's take a look first at physical or mechanical weathering, interchangeable words. Uh, this is essentially the process of making little rocks out of larger rocks. Uh, the processes include wedging, which is uh, very important. Frost wedging, water seeps into the cracks in a rock, right? It freezes, it expands, it cracks the rock. That's very important to, to the weathering process. Unloading, which we see here in this piece of granite. Uh, this is what we call onion skin peeling. This granite formed at depth. It's an inches of igneous rock. So now that it's at the surface, there's a lot less pressure on it. So slowly it's expanding, and we're getting these expansion or unloading fractures or joints in there as well. Biologic activity also plays a huge part, as we can see here. You know, roots can tear apart trees. There's lichens and stuff that will eat rocks, right? And then, of course, collisions of grains uh, in a current as they're tumbling down through wind or water, right? So just, you know, if I take a hammer and I bash up a rock, I am physically or mechanically weathering that rock. Chemical weather on Weathering, on the other hand, is the process that breaks down rock into its elemental components, right? Uh, and, ba you know, basically breaks down the internal structure of the minerals, you know, through these chemical reactions. Uh, and uh, these reactions are, are basically between, you know, air, water, carbon dioxide, right, acids, whatever happen to be around and in contact with that rock, right? This creates ions, right? So we've had all these ions that got together and made minerals, right? Now we're breaking them back apart chemically. We are releasing ions, but we are also importantly releasing some altered mineral products as well. And these are our clays. This is where we get our clays, our very fine grade mud and stuff constituents for, for physical weathering, right? So we create ions that are gonna be important in chemical uh, um, sedimentary rock formation, but we also create uh, altered mineral products, AKA clays, which are going to be clastic or detrital chemical or sedimentary rocks. So now that we have sediment, right, we need to turn it into a rock. So how do we do that? Well, first, you know, we have the, the very basics, right, weathering. This is going to, you know, uh, break down the rock physically and chemically. We're going to produce sedimentary particles. We're going to produce ions. We're going to produce clays, right? And then we have erosion. This is going to take the material and transport it to a new location. But eventually we get to a spot right, where deposition occurs, right? So now, instead of being eroded, we're depositing this material in a new location, 
right? Now this can be the physical deposition of, you know, bits of rock and sand and mud and clay, or it can be the chemical um, precipitation uh, of out of seawater of these ions into new, new solutions, right? And then very importantly, we have to go through the process of lithification. This essentially really means lithic, means rock. So this is essentially the process of rockification, if you will, right? And this happens during burial. During burial, uh, these rocks are going to get more compact, right? More pressure on top. We're going to get that equal pressure in all directions. This is going to uh, push them down. And then we're going to sometimes get, you know, secondary cementation and stuff like that as well, right? So here again, we're kind of looking closer at that process of... Uh, lithification. Here we go from, you know, those kind of sand grains on a beach, right? Uh, as those get buried, they get denser and denser, right? Clay particles, like in a mud, right? As they get buried, they start to kind of align themselves. These are, you know, very, very fine particles, one two hundred and fifty sixth of a millimeter, right? And then we can go through the process of cementation. So these grains, right, not only can be they be compacted down, but then as water percolates through them, other minerals can be deposit on the outside of these grains and acts as a cement holding these grains together. That's the process of cementation. And this is how you go from uh, a, a, a sediment to a sedimentary rock, right? What important contributions do we get from sedimentary rocks? Well, first, it's important to note that if our crust is just a thin, you know, m m candy coating shell on our planet, then sedimentary rocks are just a thin, candy coating shell on that crust, right? They're very discontinuous. They're not everywhere. We know that because we see other rocks, right? Otherwise, the sedimentary rocks would just be covering everything over, right? They're not everywhere, right? Um, so they change as, as environments change, as the deposition or erosion overtakes in a certain area, right? Uh, but they're very important because they do accord very good environmental conditions on Earth's surface at that place in time of formation, right? And give us clues to what what processes formed these rocks, right? As well as, you know, containing all sorts of cool things like fossils. These are fossil footprints from the Coconino sandstone uh, by the Grand Canyon. They're called Liaporus, very cool stuff. Um, but we have bones and, and seashells and plants and all sorts of stuff, right? Now this is gonna help us reconstruct a very detailed history of our earth, of our planet, right? And and its history, not only geologically, but biologically as well, right? So again, sediment sources, we have two sediment sources. They're gonna go to our two different types of sedimentary rocks, right? Sediment, sediments made from the particles derived from physical weathering, right? Derived from physical weathering uh, become detrital or clastic sedimentary rocks, right? Particles precipitated from solution, right? These uh, become the chemical sedimentary rocks. So here we see, this is a false color image of the Mississippi Delta. It's not that pretty if you go there. It's just showing you different, you know, to highlight that kind of broad fan-shaped uh, delta there, right? These are all clastic sedimentary rocks, right? The processes of physical weathering and chemical weathering, right? Breaking down, um, those uh, those uh, minerals into, you know, that altered mineral products this is where we get our clays from, right? But then we have chemical sedimentary rocks as seen here around Hot Springs and Yellowstone National Park. You can see this chemical sedimentary rock forming, right? So this is precipitated out of solution. Whenever you oversaturate something uh, with a certain chemical, the water can take no more of it. It's gonna start to create and precipitate out chemical uh, that, that mineral, right? This can also be done organically by uh, uh, little microorganisms and and, uh, and small uh, animals that make their shells out of, say, calcite or, or quartz or something like that. All right, folks, next time we will discuss the detrital and clastics.